welcome to the first of many video segments that are intended, designed to cover the key parts of a multivariable calculus course. You're going to find that uh, several things are true. One is you are welcome here. Come use what you, you can. Don't use what you don't need. I've designed it not with the coolest technological tools available, but for practical purposes, things that can be done in a shorter period of time. But also, when you're sitting in the seat of the student, you kind of have to get your hands dirty and write the math down. And that's what I'm going to do. But you are going to find that my own writing is less than stellar. So, let's begin. The first few segments or video lessons cover material very briefly that typically is introduced in a course before you get to multivariable calculus. But my personal teaching experiences tell me that some students have used uh, the material a lot already and some are for basic purposes they're rookies they're they're new to the subject matter so in theory you've seen some of this material what I'm doing is throwing some highlights over several topics over the next few sessions but the main topic to start with is the topic of vectors and we are going to look at vectors in two dimensions uh, later we'll get to three dimensions and quite a bit later we'll get to a number of other vector operations some of which you would have been introduced to in some courses that are considered pre-calculus but maybe not all of you again so start thing off let's have two definitions uh, the particular book I'm using right now would define a vector as a directed line segment there's a segment because it has a beginning and an end so let's say it starts here and there is its direction we are going to define it this way that a vector is a quantity that gives us both direction and what's sometimes called magnitude. But for the sake of a picture, the magnitude is the same as the length. So if you have two directed segments that go that direction and they have the same length they would be equal to each other we'll get to that later so same direction and magnitude is what we're looking for notations for a vector well there's all kinds of notations for vectors uh, and here are three extraordinarily common ones the first two um, our textbook happens to use and the third one it doesn't for reasons that you will see momentarily the component form of a vector so let's say that V is a vector would be to use these angled brackets and in two dimensions you would say V1 is the first component and V2 is the second component hang on it won't take us long we'll write examples very soon the physics way of describing the same vector would be to say that it's V1 times a component I plus V2 times J. So if you're sitting in a physics or some engineering class or even some calculus books, it may only be written in this form. Now. I've been around long enough to know that 
to a certain extent there are some preferences using certain notations and there are certain times when one notation has an advantage over others but before you start voting on your favorite for those of you that have some experience <laughs> in linear algebra you pretty much aren't going to use those two notations you're going to write them in a column form v1 v2 and if you're a computer programmer you're going to list them as what's called an array so it's probably more like this one uh, there's just so many ways to write it out so I digress so let's get to know this that I'm going to pretty much use these two notations the student in me does not have a favorite the teacher in me prefers this one for students with less experience but throughout my entire course I do not mind if students use uh, a particular notation I would say default to what your other coursework requires you to do for better practice so let's look at an example all right let's see how does it look off the screen there we go it's a little bit better now so, examples, if vector u is the vector 5, comma, 3 with our, not parentheses, but angled brackets, and the vector symbol written over, otherwise the letter u might not be a vector, 5, comma, 3, if it starts here, one, two, three, four, five units to the right, one, two, three units up. That would be vector u. You can start it at any point you choose. More about that shortly. Vector v, let's say vector v is negative four comma one. That means if I were to start here, for instance, I would go left one, two, three, four, and upwards one unit. So the directed line segment would be going that way. That would be vector v. Now these look much nicer if you use a straight edge. And they look amazing if you have software that draws the vectors. But when you're turning in a paper to a professor, uh, this is probably what it looks like for many students. Well, let's squeeze one more in here. Vector w is the vector 2 comma 0. So if I were to begin here, 1, 2 units to the right, a directed horizontal segment. You don't need to shade in the arrows, I just chose to do that for visual purposes. Now, some highlights, some notes real fast. First, it doesn't matter where you start from. Location may not be known. All right. In fact, for any of the vectors you're about to see, we don't know where a starting location is, and I intentionally left an x and y axis off the grid to not distract you from assuming notations. When you're in linear algebra, you might always start from the origin, and we might do that later in this course. But for now, we just have a direction and a length, direction and magnitude, uh, vector w here. Secondly, um, if you want to know if two vectors are equal, the if is they have to have the same direction and the same magnitude. So I could start here, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, and this would be the same as vector u. Same direction, same magnitude. Okay, I'll let you fill in the blanks for that. Same direction, same magnitude, same components. Lots of ways of writing that. And the last little piece, I'm not going to write this down, but the arrow ends at the point. The arrow doesn't go after the point. It points to what's called the terminal point. We will see more of those in a future segment. Now, 
about that magnitude. Let me just slide this up here a bit. I'll come back to the graph in a moment. The magnitude or length of a vector can be found in two dimensions by using what some of you would call Pythagorean's theorem or others might call a distance formula. Um, the magnitude of a vector has a notation. Its formal notation in some books is written this way. This basically is asking you what is the length of the drawn vector. And it would be calculated as a little distance formula, v1 to the second power plus v2 to the second power. For the problems that we see here, it would be similar to you know, drawing in the right triangle. And if that's 5 and that's 3, then we could determine that the magnitude of vector u is uh, 25 and 9 is the square root of 34, for example. And the magnitude of vector w is 2 units exactly. Now notice that I got a little bit lazy here with my notation. It turns out that there's an alternate way of writing magnitude that some books use and it looks a lot like what you might call as the absolute value bar. Absolute value question mark? Well, it's not really an absolute value. It's a distance from one place to another and the absolute value for many of us is defined as a distance. Same formula. I often use this notation, uh, well, several reasons, to honor many of my professors I had that only use this and textbooks. But also, after a while, these little vertical lines, they start to become blinding if you write them often enough. And we will write them quite often in this course. One more example to round off our first little foray into the course. Okay. Whoops, wrong notation. Look, this is what happens in real life. We make mistakes. I mean, if I was high production, I could go and re-edit this and shoot it again, but then I wouldn't be like a human. Negative 3i minus 4j. That vector would start here, for example. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. It would be directed left and down, point to the point. That would be my vector u. And the magnitude of that vector would be its length. So I'm drawing it and I'm calculating the magnitude. Those are two separate questions. I think you will find that if this is 3 and this is 4, then that is indeed 5. I'm not even going to show the calculation for that. Again, not supposed to be teaching from scratch this topic. It's a quick review. Let me show you one more vector here. Vector v is equal to the j vector. And if you go to the fine print of our particular textbook, it actually defines j to be the vector 0, 1. It basically is saying that there are um, no x components and one y component. It's very short or small in this paper. It has another name for it we'll get to in a future video segment. And its magnitude, using the fancy notation here, is, what is that magnitude? Oh yes, it's going to be 1 exactly. So, stick around. We're going to go through a series of basic operations 
focusing primarily on the visual for a while, but you'll see it subtly moves out of the visual um, into, well, I'll let you find out when you stick around. Until next time.